Before we cover thread pools, we need to make sure we understand what a thread is. A thread is a part of a CPU or multiple CPUs that is captured and used solely for a process. You could say that at any given time, multiple threads run multiple processes. To see how threads work, take a look at this code example. I have two methods here, each set to run a loop to print some text in the console. The first example from lines 15 to 19 runs a counter. The second example just displays text telling us it is running. Take a look at line 24 in the second example. A new thread is declared, telling it to kick off the method while running this message five times. The start command is on line 25. And the join command, which tells one thread to wait until the other is complete, is on line 33. And we have thread.sleep commands, which indicate that the threads are done. Before we run this, you may notice these red squiggly lines under the threads. If we run the mouse over this, this tells us the namespace needed is not present. Now, most books would tell you to type the namespace up above, but I'm in the shortcuts, so I'll click here and add the system.threading namespace. It's added and the red is gone. Let's run this. Threads are created to run a process and then they vanish when they are finished. Creating a thread uses resources. Using a thread pool saves those threads. You may want this, for example, when you have a web or database server that processes requests, each needing a thread. From the pool, as a thread becomes available, it will process a request. In this code example, a thread pool is created, and then to test it, a message shows that the pool is in use through the QUSERWORKITEM command on line 42. Let's run this, and we see the message. There are many other thread pool commands out there, but for the exam, the main thing to know is the reason for a thread pool, to save threads so they can be reused. Of course, threads do take up CPU, so only use these when needed.